Hi, welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps, and today we're going to be installing a Noctua fan, a silent fan, inside a Nintendo GameCube. I did this GameCube project a little while ago now. I will link the video up above. You can go and have a look at how I totally restored and built that. It's an awesome machine. I've been using it a lot. And because I've got the SD2 SP2 inside there, which I'll show you in a bit, it only needs to run the disc on startup and once the games are up and running it will stop spinning so that's nice and quiet but then you can hear the fan and this fan is like pretty old by now and it's quite loud it's not like playstation 4 loud which sounds like a jet engine taking off but finding out that there is a mod that you can do i thought as always i want to try it out what i've done is i've found this online which i will link in the description as well it's on thingiverse and it's an adapter so that you can put a 40 millimeter fan inside the gamecube which previously uses a 50 millimeter fan this is a noctua nfa 4x10 which is the fan that was recommended for doing this job i'm going to open it up see how we go and hopefully it'll be a relatively simple install but we'll see how that goes while i'm here just a quick update on my metal sticks that i installed on my wavebird just recently these are so good i did say to a few people i'd leave some feedback because people are concerned about the metal maybe being a bit uncomfortable for long play sessions so after i installed these i started up a new save file on twilight princess and now like 17 hours into that game i've been using this exclusively batteries are still lasting which is why wavebird is so good but it's really really comfortable to use textured concentric circles on the c stick are really comfortable the bit i was slightly concerned about the very slightly sharp hard edge on the concentric circles on the silver stick have kind of softened up a little bit it's just that initial edge just needed to wear off and these are like super comfortable my thumb isn't all hard on the skin so it's not like i've built up a callus so don't feel it it's really really good so i got those from zed labs i'll link the video if you want to take a look at me installing those but it's made for a brilliant controller anyway let's take a look at this fan okay so first things first before we take it apart we'll have a look at how it is before so the disc's being taken out so we're not going to get any disc spinning noise the fan is on this side and I've got this app here which is a sound analyzer app and we'll have a listen to how loud that fan is. Okay, so as you can see there, before it trails off, it was on a fairly steady 70 decibels. So that's what we've got to compare to. Let's see how we go with the new one. Right, so that's all powered down and unplugged. So what we're going to need to do is open up the GameCube. I'm just going to put this soft microfiber pad down just for opening up. I mentioned before about my SD2 SP2. So in serial port 2, I've got this little device that plugs in. And that has a SD card in there. You can save games onto there, plug in, run a bit of software called Swiss which I've got on a disc that runs in the GameCube and it accesses a menu to allow you to load all those games up but there's one of the settings in Swiss which is once it's booted up Swiss and you're choosing your games it doesn't need to use the Swiss disc anymore once that menu is loaded so you can stop the disc spinning so that's totally silent and then all you can hear is the fan so what we're doing here is we're eliminating or attempting to eliminate the fan noise also so opening up the GameCube not only do you need a game bit driver and I showed this one when I was opening up a, a Pokemon cartridge recently I've got this one, it'll connect onto here, but in the GameCube it's very, very deep, it's quite hard to get in. So to open this one, I'm going to use one that I made myself, that I've shown before. I made that years ago, I've had plenty of good use out of it. So there's just four of these game bit screws to remove. And then the lid will simply lift off, and we can access the inside with our existing fan which is here we're just removing the fan bit from the inside there so the whole bracket and things hopefully that'll be able to stay in place this has got two wires attaching it and it plugs in over here i'm pretty sure that the fitment on this fan is going to be different so i'll just move the gamecube to one side for a moment and we'll take a look at what we've got in here now this isn't a fan that's like specifically made for GameCube. So there we go, that is what we've got. And there's these little rubber bits for where it's mounted and everything to really minimize the noise. The cable that comes out of it actually has three wires on it and a little plug here with three pins, which is completely different to the GameCube one. Now when I was looking online, see I don't know what any of this stuff is, you can buy adapters. See like that goes to like two pins there. So maybe I'll be able to adapt it. I don't know. I've got some screws there that come with it that will come in handy with the 3D printed bracket back to that so these i've seen for sale on ebay for about seven pounds and you get the bracket and you get the wire like the, the cable adapter this sort of thing that will 
screw onto here, something like that, and then that'll screw into the GameCube and it'll all just fit, or should fit, in place quite evenly. So I didn't order one online, which means I haven't got the cable. Now this does come with various adapters. Okay, so if I unplug the fan in the GameCube, that just sort of unhooks around here like that. The size of that and that are slightly different. Um, so what I might do, seeing as this fan is going to be no use anymore, I might borrow these wires, find out what these two are connected to and just sort of swap for what I've got because that I don't think is going to fit in there. So first I'm going to need to remove the existing fan. need a crosshead screwdriver. There we go. I should have mentioned before that if you're going to use Swiss and the SD2, SP2, it's a lot easier if you have a mod chip in your system. And when I did the original video of building this one, I did install a mod chip. I've also got other videos about installing chips in GameCubes. So there are ways around it if you've got like an action replay or something, but it's a lot easier if you've got a chip in there. So the fan just lifts out and that's the space where our new one is going to go. And I'll just do a quick test fit for my adapter that I printed. That fits okay, that's all right. And then the fan will, will go in behind it. So we'll come to that in a bit. This is my older fan. To be honest, it's never really bothered me in terms of noise. But as soon as I find out there is a mod you can do, I'm always going to want to do it. So I've got three wires coming off here. This has just got two wires there. So I'm not sure which of those three I'm going to need. I'm going to investigate this red and black that are connected there. Red and black there. And this one is just blank. So essentially all I need to do, if I look at where this plugs in and connects, black there, red there black there, red there. So I basically just need the black and red wire that come out of here. Don't think I need to bother with the yellow at all. So I could do it with the adapter or I could just go a bit gung-ho and do the wires straight off, which I think is what I'm gonna do. So I should be able to just cut this off like that and pull off the shrink wrap and get these two tinned. I need to switch on my soldering iron because I'm gonna be doing a little bit of soldering with this. You could just twist the wires together, I guess. So, strip that, strip that. I couldn't actually find a guide anywhere on doing this without the adapter cable. So maybe this is something new. <laughs> or maybe there's a good reason why people don't do that. We will see. So I'm gonna cut off the wires from my other one. Now the thing is, I've got like gray and black here and black and red there. I'm not sure which is which. So that would have been the one from the adapter that sort of plugged in that way. And I've got black on the left. Have a look at that one, I've got black on the left. So let's just say gray and black is gonna to swap to red and black. If it's the wrong way around, I'll take it all apart and, and redo, but I, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. So I'll strip these two. And then we'll probably have to zoom in a little bit for what's coming next. My soldering iron is warming up. I'm just gonna get a little bit of flux onto the ends of the wires here and here. What I'm gonna do is tin these. That means melt a little bit of solder onto each wire first, then line them up and um, connect them together. It's raining outside, so it's gonna be a bit noisy, but hopefully it'll stop when we're testing out the fan afterwards. So we'll heat the wire, melt on a little bit of solder here and here. So this process of tinning just makes it much, much easier for connecting bare wires and things together. So I've got the two wires here. Do the same with those, just heat them, melt a little solder. You don't need to see a big blob on there. They just kind of tend to come up a bit shinier once the solder's taken to it. Just be patient and heat it up enough. Before I connect them together, I've got a bit of heat shrink tubing. We've got thunder and everything. Um, so if I feed the wires through there, I can put it back over where I've connected these later. Just to make sure the yellow wire is not gonna interfere with that at all, even though it's still insulated, I'm gonna cut that one just a little shorter. Again, hopefully we won't need the yellow one. I'll soon find out. Um, what I've got to do here is get my black wire, line it up with the black wire here, and just hold it steady and reheat. Those two bits of solder will merge together. That one there with the red and the gray. Like that. Now obviously, if I was to just put the heat shrink straight on those, these two metal bits are gonna to touch, so I need to keep those separate. Gonna get just a little bit of Kapton tape to keep those separate. You only have to put it around one wire actually, and I'll just keep it away from the other. But if I put it between the two, 
fold it over and then bring them together I'll be able to keep that nice and tight it really is raining out there it's a problem with filming in a shed doesn't really keep the noise out so I have soldered and taped those two so I mean that should alone work um, but the insulation here if I can get it around the tape will just keep everything tidy so I could try and push the yellow in as well that will just keep it neat so there you go I could leave it like that that would be fine but with a little bit of heat on that it'll just shrink I don't want to damage my Fan. Just put a little tape over that for now because it's only plastic. Just sort of mask all this bit off. You can rub a soldering iron over it. You can put a lighter under it or whatever. Um, I'm going to use my heat gun. Um, that's on 200 at the moment, which is plenty to just shrink up that tube and get it to a nice tight fit. So that is as quick as you need because again, I don't want to damage the plastic of the fan. That now can unclip. And I've got my modded GameCube fan with all the wiring ready to plug into the GameCube in theory. Let's see if that works. Right, so I think it's probably prudent to just check that this is actually going to work. So before I put it back together, I've got my power supply in there. I've got my opening here, which my new fan will now plug into. Connect that up there. Switch on. And the fan powers up. Okay. So that is blowing the air this way, which means it will take the heat from the inside of the GameCube and just disperse that out. And it works <laughs> with my <laughs> impromptu wiring. So that's pretty good. So next job is to try and get it set up inside the frame. So we'll switch off. Oh, that's pretty ominous, isn't it? <laughs> we'll take a look at how this is going to mount inside. So this fan now needs to go in here. So that reaches across to there, just about. So that will go in that way quite neatly. And I've got my adapter. So I can use the four screws from the GameCube to attach these four corners to here. And there's like little spaces there. So it'll sit further out. So that's okay there. The fan is going to go on the inside from the back. So the screws are going to go in. I've gone to one of those eBay listings just to check that I've got everything right. I've got four screws need to go in there first and we'll mount onto the other bit. And you'll notice as well on this one that they've got the logo on an angle, which means that this is where that cable comes up. So that's all correct. Now there is a slight bit of rubber attached here, which means that you're going to get less vibration against the bracket, which is really good. So it's just getting these screws in is going to be the tricky bit now. Just need to be patient. Because it's fresh plastic, I need to thread it, which means you go in a little bit and out a little bit repeatedly and that just allows it to cut into the plastic. Once you've got one corner done obviously don't over tighten them and don't work your way around clockwise move to the opposite corner next. Just check that that's not too tight but tight enough that it's not wobbling and then I'll do the other two. Okay, so that is my new fan all assembled and you can see compared to the old one that's now mimicking that size of the old fan there. It should do the job rather nicely. Okay, so the fan is now attached to the bracket nice and neatly. We've got the little spacers here. That's going to go up to the right and come out through this bit. Should just loop around and squeeze past here. That's a little bit in the way might cause a slight issue. I don't want to be pinching my wires there. Just use a knife and cut in a little bit there so I've got a bit of space for that to go past. Right, so now my wire fits quite snugly in that gap there. All I did was just trimmed out a little bit of the fan housing and a little bit of the adapter and that's all okay. Make sure I've got no little bits in the way there and that is now ready to put in place here. Before, if I hadn't have trimmed that bit, this wire would be going out the side and it wouldn't go there. And although I could have had it this way around and fed it across, it's not quite long enough. If I did this again, I'd let those wires go a little longer so I had a bit more room to play with. But anyway, this should work fine. That will sit inside the housing here and I'll get my four little black screws that were attaching the original fan and screw those back in place. That all feels pretty solid. OK, 
Okay, so that is my fan all in place and feed the cable around where it's meant to go just to keep that out of the way there and then plug it in place into my GameCube. Again, probably a good idea at this point just to give it a quick test. We'll just have a look at the fan there, see it spin up. And we are on. Doesn't seem to be any parts moving or vibrating or anything like that. Yep, we're all good. So let's see if this will smoothly go back together. It's all in place. So that's all back together and you can see the new fan inside there. So I'm going to just power supply, plug it in the back, switch on. So remember we were on 70 before. Alright, so if anything that's louder. Now it could be the ambient noise, but in general, I mean you could probably even hear it there. Honestly, a little bit disappointing. It's installed and it works, so that's something. It's just not significantly quiet, really. It doesn't seem to be quieter than the old one at all. But there we go. We have to try these things to find out, don't we? It's not significantly louder than the old one. The installation itself went well. The bracket was good. The cable, which I adapted, worked fine. So that's all really good. And if you can see there, it's a lovely, neat install. So on the whole, it's a successful job. Whether it was worth doing or not, I don't know. All right. So here's something interesting. I took it in, hooked it all up, and it played fine. Everything worked okay, the fan was working, but even though the noise was only very, very slightly louder than before, because my ears had tuned into it so much from, from doing the mod, it was really starting to bother me while I was playing. Bit more research, tried to figure out what it might be. Brought it out here because I was going to be opening it up to slightly undo the screws and see if there was too much pressure on those that was causing too much vibration, and had a little look through all the extra bits that come with it, and in here, is this NARC11 low noise adapter. So that kind of goes in line with the regular cable, which you know that I haven't got anymore. It goes in line with that and reduces the amount of noise. And I figured it's probably just a resistor in there. So what I did, I took my multimeter and checked all the different points. And it turns out that if I'm checking on the middle point on this cable, which is the red, it comes up as 100 ohms of resistance. On the other two, there is negligible resistance. And that's just wires going straight through on those and um, but 100 ohms on the middle so I've got two options I could either open this up take the resistor out and solder it in line with my red wire or which is probably what I'm going to do because it's less messy just take a 100 ohms resistor and put it in line with my red cable so that's what I'm going to try next so it's the red and black wire inside that I connected up to the gray and black wire out here so if I just move that out of the way so I need to get a resistor in line with this part here probably safest to do that by unplugging the cable and then moving it out of the way here. So I'll just turn that around. Here's probably going to be about best. So just cut through there. Strip the wire on both bits. Cut the ends off my resistor so there's just a little bit to solder. And I will also need the Heat shrink tubing. So one of the best things to do with this is move it well out of the way but make sure it's on the wire before you start doing anything because it's very very easy to forget all about it. Now while my soldering iron is warming up I still think there might be a slight issue with there being too much pressure on the, the corners of the fan where I've, where I've attached those so I think what is probably wise to do while it's open is to just undo those screws ever so slightly because they are quite tight. It might just ease the pressure off that and, and it can absorb those vibrations in the way that it should. As I've said before on my videos when I'm soldering, you can get by without flux. I went for years without using it, but it does help quite a bit in terms of just getting that solder to flow where you want it. So warm up the wire on the resistor, get a bit of solder on there on each end. Warm up my wire. Get some solder on each bit there. And then if I can bring that nearby, get it lined up in just the right sort of spot for the wire. I can even get another little bit of solder in the gap there. There we go. 
and the same with this wire on here so I'm going to take that off there I've now got my resistor in line on the wire there so I can bring my heat shrink tube in around to here um, obviously don't want to damage my game cube so I need to get that sort of facing the other way when I'm heating it so just hold that up there There we go. One of the things with the heat shrink is if you warm it too much, you can you can desolder and it won't work, which is not what we're going for. So that's all done there. Get that all tucked in out of the way. Decent position for that. Happy with that. That is significantly quieter. Interesting point, these screws are just the right width and this kind of open countersink, this circular area are designed so you can get these on and off with coins. I don't have a coin handy but you can see with this, I mean I'm not going to use a battery to try and undo a screw but you get the idea that it fits in there. Quite a nice little bit of design by Nintendo there, it's like the polar opposite of uh, how difficult it is to get the other screws out that are in there. much much better coming through about a steady 60 there instead of the 71 72 it was on before that's much much quieter that's really good <sighs> all right so if at first you don't succeed just keep messing about with it until it either breaks or it's better i suppose is, is usually my approach i'm really happy with that now at first i was quite disappointed because i'd heard really good things about the mod and um i'd not really had any problems with the fan before so i felt a bit stupid when i'd, I'd modded it and then it was pretty much the same if a little louder but a bit of careful prodding around with the other accessories that came with it meant that really i was a bit daft to just get them all out of the box and chuck them to one side straight away it's worth actually reading up on the things you've bought kind of makes sense really anyway so let's run this off if you wanted to do this mod one it is worth it two it was quite easy for me to print the part off but if you haven't got a 3d printer you can order those off ebay if they come with the adapter cable then that is great that will make life much easier for you and you will be able to use this low noise adapter in line with it which is great if you haven't got that, if you're just printing it off yourself, then you can cut and splice the cables in the red wire to the gray wire. Use a 100 ohm resistor. It'll just reduce the amount of power going to the fan. It should be enough to keep the GameCube cool, I hope. And then that will reduce the amount of noise and give you a nice quiet fan. And uh, yeah, much happier with that end result and looking forward to going and having a play without the sound of the fan doing my head in. So if you've enjoyed that little adventure, uh, do please subscribe and check out any future videos. Have a look through my old ones. There are loads on there and um, I'll see you for the next one. Leave a like, leave a comment if you've had a go at doing this uh, and if you're thinking of maybe doing it differently or if you already use the equipment properly, maybe I'd be interested to hear from you. Uh, but until then, take care and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.